Today's glitch video is brought to you by the pickle emoji. And if you have a story you'd like to send my way, please go to AsTheRavenDreams.com and click the button to do so. And of course, thank you. Nine years ago, I had an experience that I still can't fully explain. Maybe it was my brain playing tricks on me, but it was unusual, as nothing similar has happened to me either before nor since. When I was a teenager, my friend, let's call her Sarah, and I went to a local festival that our town hosts annually. This event is essentially a community gathering with street shops, live music, and the like. It's actually quite boring. However, one special feature is the opening of several historic buildings that are typically closed all year, except for this day. Now, this part is a bit cringy, but we were weird teens after all. We thought it would be fun to enter the largest of these buildings and search for ghosts or anything paranormal, since we were pretty into that stuff back then. We wandered around the building, which was an old cabin from the 1860s, but the presence of other people somewhat ruined the experience. We decided to wait until everyone else had left, before going up to the second floor to start recording. The upper floor of the cabin isn't very big. Once you climb the stairs, you face a small child's bedroom. There's also a short hallway to the left that leads to the master bedroom with another small closet area inside. That's all that there is up there. Anyway, we went into the child's bedroom first and started recording in there. We joked about the mirror being haunted, made fun of a straw hat that we found, and even joked about seeing a ghost in the window. However, nothing unusual actually happened. Once I got bored of that room, I decided to check out the master bedroom, but Sarah wasn't quite done looking yet, so she stayed. When I was in the master bedroom, I filmed around for a bit and then filmed in the small closet, but again saw nothing. As I turned out of the closet, though, I was surprised by a girl that I hadn't seen before. I didn't even hear her approach me. She asked me what I was doing, and being the introvert that I am, I was embarrassed to be recording a closet. So I stopped recording, and quietly said, nothing, and went outside to find Sarah. When I got outside, however, Sarah wasn't there. But a minute later, she came out and asked, why did you just leave me in there? When I explained that I thought she had left me, and that I had encountered a random girl, Sarah said, That was me, and you just ignored me. That's when things became really strange. The girl that I saw did not resemble Sarah at all. Sarah is short, blonde hair with blue eyes, and was wearing a white shirt with shorts that day. The girl that I saw was much taller, had dark brown hair and eyes, a longer face, and was wearing a dark blue shirt. I didn't look to see what type of pants she was wearing, but her voice was deeper than Sarah's as well. It was like talking to an entirely different person. After that, I really didn't believe that it was Sarah that I saw, so I decided to look at the recording, but of course it cut off while I was filming in the closet just before the girl approached me. I distinctly remember stopping the recording after seeing the girl since I was feeling embarrassed about filming in a closet, so that really confused me. It was like something you would see in a horror movie, where you think you have proof, only for it to miraculously disappear. Unfortunately, I don't have that video anymore since this was almost a decade ago. Even if I did, it would only show me filming that room before it abruptly ended in the closet. I'm sure that anyone reading this might be skeptical, as I would be, but it's definitely one of the most unusual experiences that I've ever had. As I said, 
it could have been my brain playing tricks on me, but you would think experiences like this would happen to me more often if that were the case. Some of you may also think that I was just imagining it, since I was specifically looking for ghosts. But we'd done this countless times before, with nothing like this ever happening. I also don't think that I'd imagine a ghost that looked so lifelike. This was like encountering any other person on the street. It didn't seem paranormal at all. All I know is that this is an experience that I will never forget. The OP then added what they labeled a rather long update. After replying to comments, I was reminded of other experiences that happened after this that are related, so I'll tell them below. There are two things that I would like to point out, however. I was 16 at the time, and she was 15, so we were young, but not little kids or anything like that. I'd like to also point out that Sarah and I were mentally in sync, if that makes sense. I mean, we thought almost exactly the same, to the point where it was creepy. We even used to make fun of it. She's a very positive person, and I'm a negative person, so we would make fun of that old opposites attract proverb. I mean, we were so in sync that we would have at least 12 jinx moments, where we would say exactly the same thing at the same time, every time that we saw each other. And these weren't common expressions. These were just random sentences and phrases every time. We actually wondered if we knew each other in past lives, and that's why we had that connection. I'm not sure if past lives are real, but if they are, I have no doubt that we'd have met. We also had this weird ability where we seemed to be able to sense when one of us was about to call or text. We'd get this feeling, and within a minute, it would happen. It was such a strong connection that our other friends even noticed it and pointed it out to us several times, so we know that it wasn't just us. That all sounds completely made up, but it's not. I've never had that connection with anybody else in my life, and I'm afraid that we lost it after she moved and we lost contact, but I cherish those memories. It was such an unreal experience, and one that I hope everyone can have at some point in their life, but I don't think that many do. Anyway, the reason I decided to bore you with that long explanation is because when I saw this strange girl in the cabin that was apparently Sarah, it really did seem like a completely different person. I didn't have that special connection with this girl, and it was like talking to a complete stranger. I think that's one of the reasons why I remember the experience so well. Alright, now I'll get on to two other experiences that I was reminded of that I think are related to this one. The first happened the afternoon after we visited that cabin. During our time in the cabin, we took this old shoe buckle that we found. We weren't the best of people. It was about one and a half or two inches long and that afternoon we were jumping on her trampoline with it, trying not to get hit by it, because why not? I distinctly remember that it fell off five times. Up until the fifth time it fell off, we had no problem seeing where it landed and retrieving it within a few seconds. But on the fifth time, we couldn't find it. We both saw exactly where it fell off, and it was right between the springs so it couldn't have gone far. We both searched for it for about an hour, both under and within a 50-foot radius of the trampoline, but we just could not find it. I even went back a little later with my metal detector, and it was nowhere to be found. To this day, we've never found it, and we both joked at the time that it probably went to another dimension. The second experience is very similar to that one. We also took this old button from the cabin at the same time that we took the buckle. Again, we weren't the best people. After we spent about an hour looking for the vanishing buckle, we decided to do the same thing with the button, 
and I'm not kidding when I say that it also disappeared the first time that it fell off. After that, we decided to just go inside because it was creepy that two things from the cabin disappeared in the same way. The difference here is that we actually found the button about a week later in the clothes basket in her closet, and she swears to me that she did not go looking for it later. There's always the possibility that she did look for it and planted it there, but it didn't seem like she was lying, and we had an excellent ability to tell when the other was lying because of that special connection that we had. I do still have that button as well. Alright, that's the end for now. Upon reading it all, it does seem like a far-fetched tale, but this really was just one long, unusual series of events. I've never had anything quite like it happen before or since. I'm sure there could be a logical explanation for everything that's happened, or maybe it really was just a series of unlikely coincidences. I'll never know for sure, so you can make of it what you will. I do know for sure that she and I had a connection unlike anything that I've ever experienced, so I at least know that that much is true. And maybe that connection is why these weird things happened to us. My father passed away over this past winter after a long battle with leukemia. He and I were close, and he actually passed away when my fiancé and I were having some issues, and I had decided to spend the night at my parents' house. He wanted me to handle everything when he passed so that my mother wouldn't have to. He knew that she would be a mess, and knew that I could still maintain a strong exterior, even when being an emotional wreck on the inside. So, weirdly, it felt like he waited until I was there to die. And, unfortunately, the image of him lifeless the next morning is something that I don't know if I'll ever get over. Anyway, I decided to stay with my mom for a while, through the holidays at least, and to help her adjust to being alone for the first time in 50 plus years. I was staying in the one bedroom that was upstairs. She still slept in their bedroom on the main floor. My partner and I were still having issues, so I wasn't sleeping well. I was up late most nights, just stressed from all angles. I was also out of work at the time and stressing about interviews. One night, while I'm laying in bed watching TV, I get a text alert. When I look at my phone, I have a message from my mother that read, I know you're here with me. And that seemed like an odd 3am text, so I replied, Are you okay? I didn't get a reply, so I decided to go downstairs and check on her. She was asleep in her bedroom, snoring away. I was weirded out, but I figured I would just ask her in the morning if she remembered messaging me and then immediately falling asleep. Before heading back upstairs, I went to the kitchen to grab some water, and while passing through the living room, I saw her phone charging on a side table. I grabbed my water, and I went back upstairs to double-check the timestamp on the message, thinking it had actually come through earlier or something. Maybe there was some kind of delay. And in the morning, I asked my mother about it, and she had no idea what I was even talking about. She went and grabbed her phone from the living room and seemed to be as freaked out as I was. We kind of laughed it off awkwardly and said that it was my dad reaching out from beyond the grave and left it at that. But it's always bothered me the way that it was worded. If my dead father were to text me, wouldn't it be, just know that I'm here with you or I'll always be with you? something along those lines, but instead it said, I know you're here with me, as if I've died too, or am soon going to. 
or it read like something a living person would say to the dead. I've thought, maybe he's in another timeline now, where the family is all together. I just don't know. I think about this often because I have no explanation for receiving the text, since the phone was in a room alone when I received a message from it. And even resolving to it being delivered much later than it was sent, I do believe my mother in her confusion about it. She doesn't use her cell much anyways, and was using it even less because she was overwhelmed by people calling her and the house phone to check in on her. I just needed to get this off my chest, and see if there's any other interesting theories about what it meant. Like, maybe I'm dead. Maybe my dad is alive in an alternate universe. Where I used to work, there was a bar with a large cloakroom slash toilets. These were down the end of the bar where weird stuff had always happened. Previously, a staff member's very young child had seen ghost children and asked why they were laughing at him and why the man there was looking at him. They'd been the only ones in the building. Laughter's been heard in the empty toilets when a member of staff checked around before locking up and the shadows of feet seen walking past in the light under the closed door. However, in the many years that I have worked there, I had never personally experienced anything odd until this occurrence. During lockdown, the owner had taken the opportunity to redecorate, and we all pitched in to help. The ladies' toilets had already been repainted and retiled, and the owner had been putting up decorative finishing touches. I went in to use the facilities, and as I was about to leave the cloakroom area, I noticed the owner had put up a new, very large gold ornate mirror next to the door. It was big, and so striking that it stopped me in my tracks in surprise. I just wasn't used to seeing a mirror there. It was then that I noticed my reflection, and that my gold chain necklace was missing. I always wear a gold chain. It's fairly long, the box-shaped links catch the light, and are reasonably sized. We're not talking Mr. T size here, but it's not a fine chain either. I was wearing a lowish scoop neck top that day, and had short hair at the time, so its absence was obvious against my skin. The fastening on the chain had been a bit dodgy for a while, but I'd fixed it before lockdown, but the repair wasn't great, and it needed redoing when things reopened, so I assumed it had fallen off. Kicking myself for still wearing it before I had gotten it fixed properly, I retraced my steps and checked in the toilet stall. No joy. So then I turned around to head back to the door, passing the mirror to head into the bar to try to find it. Reaching for the door handle, it was then that I had that feeling that you get when someone standing behind you puts a necklace around your neck to fasten it. The feeling of cold metal on my skin. I turned and looked back in the mirror, and there it was. I still cannot rationalize this. It was just not there. There was no hiding place, like in my hair or behind clothes or whatever. And then it was just back. The usual stuff to mention, I was not under the influence of anything, and it was first thing in the morning, so I wasn't really tired. But glitch in the matrix? Faulty new mirror? <laughs> Who knows? The chain has been fixed now, just to make sure. Hi, Raven. First, I would like to apologize because English is not my first language, so it'll be a little hard to explain what happened to me. I found your podcast channel on Spotify around a month ago. I especially enjoy your glitch stories. I have to admit that I felt relieved that I'm not alone. 
Most of my family and friends think that I'm crazy because these weird situations happen to me all the time. The most unsettling situation that I can't explain was around two months ago. At that time, I was in my dorm studying for exams. I was nervous, so I took a walk for groceries. I took my big black backpack with me, locked my dorm up, and unzipped my wallet. There was also a little pocket with a zip, so I put the key in it. First, I would also like to inform you that I have OCD, so I'm always checking things again and again, where I put items, if I locked the doors, etc. In this little pocket in my wallet, I always keep a USB with my schoolwork, and also my key. This is important information. Sorry for the long text of explaining, but please bear with me. I put my wallet into the backpack and walked outside. At the grocery store, everything went as normal. As I was paying for my stuff, I removed my wallet and paid with my card, and then immediately put my wallet in the front pocket of my backpack. I was buying a lot of stuff and not everything fit in my bag, so I asked for a paper bag. When I got back to my dorm and unzipped my wallet and the little pocket in it to take the key, I froze. The key that I needed was there, but the USB was missing. Inside my dorm room, I checked my whole wallet again and nothing. I put my wallet on a table and went over to my backpack and paper bag. Well, at that moment, I just wanted to evaporate. All of my important work was on it because my laptop was slow, and I expected it to break any time soon. Also, on the USB were pictures of my dog that passed away. I felt burning anxiety in my body. I checked everything at least three times. I pulled every item from the bags, but nothing. There was no USB. To be certain, I continued to check my whole dorm room. I sat on a chair and spent ten minutes not blinking or moving in shock. I clearly remembered putting the key right next to the USB. I had a vivid image in front of my eyes. When I calmed down, but still with tears coming, I called my mom. She advised me to go through my stuff again or to go back to the shop. At that moment, I was absolutely certain that it was lost, 100%. I decided to put what I had bought in my cabinets and in the fridge. As I was reaching for the last item from the paper bag, guess what? My USB. I was shocked, because I put everything out and back, and it was not there. I was relieved, but it didn't make any sense. How did it get there? One, the paper bag was new. Two, I didn't unzip the little pocket in my wallet with a key and USB, as there was no reason to do so. And three, I put my wallet in my backpack. To this day, it does not make sense to me at all. I still talk to my mom about it, and she also can't process this weird thing that happened. How did my USB teleport from a zipped pocket in my wallet into a new paper bag. Why didn't I find it the first time, or the second time, or the third time when I was searching for it? Did my USB teleport, glitch, or was this an angel looking after me and somehow bringing my USB back to me? I guess I'll never know. I have a lot of stories that I'll submit to you in the future as I feel like this is the right place to share, and... Sending a lot of love to all listeners. Okay, this might get a little long, but I'm trying to include as much detail as possible. Seven and a half years ago, I, 42, female, opened a bar slash restaurant. There was a little alcove area, sort of set back from the main dining room. I decided to hang wallpaper in the alcove. 
the thick type that looks like tin tiles, if you paint it properly. I hung the wallpaper myself, and while I do most of the design and decoration work in my bars, I'm not incredibly good or exacting at some of the tasks, even though the end product is usually fine. The alcove, maybe 10 foot by 8 foot, had three walls. Instead of a fourth wall, it just opened up into the dining room and had two electrical outlets, one on the left wall and one on the right, if you were standing inside the area with your back to the main dining room. I papered the left wall first, kind of haphazardly. I held a strip of wallpaper up to the section with the outlet, and I made a vague outline of where to cut the wallpaper so that the outlet would be accessible through it. Since I am the way that I am, I didn't line it up perfectly, but almost, and I had to redo the strip, being more careful that time. I worked my way around the walls clockwise, and about an hour later I got to the second outlet. I was tired, so I made myself measure twice, cut once, so the second outlet would properly line up the first time. While I was meticulously measuring, my buddy John, 42, male, came over to the space to check on my progress. He is way better at home improvement stuff than me, and as soon as he walked into the future restaurant, he laughed, because he knew that I had messed up the first outlet. I admitted that I had been impatient, messed up, and was trying to get the second outlet to work right the first time. Fast forward four and a half-ish years, COVID shutdown was in full effect and John was helping me work the to-go food pickup window. We'd converted to to-go only like a lot of restaurants. The unused dining room became a warehouse and storage space of sorts, and we used it for dry food prep and for staging pickup orders. One day I was making some new menus, and John was working the pickup window. I was trying to plug my laminator into the leftmost alcove outlet, but since the dining room was full of dry goods boxes and supply tables, there wasn't anywhere to sit the laminator where its relatively short cord would comfortably reach the left outlet. John saw me looking for a way to arrange stuff and he said, just plug it into the right outlet, the good wallpaper one. We laughed because even though I'd worked so hard on that second outlet, I ended up just shoving a couch against it and it had not been used since the restaurant opened. So, I moved the couch away from the wall a bit and you guessed it, no outlet, no cut in the wallpaper, no patch, nothing. I called John over and we just sort of stared at the space where we knew the outlet was. Nothing we came up with satisfied the confusion. I even called my perfectionist amateur handyman dad and asked him if he remembered an outlet there. And of course he did, because I had told him about my attempts to eyeball the first one and he jokingly reminded me that he had raised me better than that. Three years later, we all still mention this from time to time. Any ideas? Glitches have happened to me a lot in my recent experiences. I saw an airplane in the sky that was not moving twice in my lifetime. I saw a person pass by and then saw them again pass by like as if they were on a loop. And three weeks ago, I was waiting for the public bus, and I saw it coming down the street. It stopped at a light, and it drove past a tall and not-so-wide bush, but it never turned onto my road, and it never continued down the road that it was traveling on. I asked the boy behind me if he saw the bus, and he said no, that he was playing a game on his phone, and then he checked the time. He said that it wasn't coming yet, that it would be there in seven minutes. I looked back at the same road, and here it was, coming back down the road again. 
it stopped at the light, and when it finally started to move forward behind that tall but not so wide bush, it again did not come out of the other end. That's when I realized that something was happening. Yesterday I was chilling in my room and I heard my door creep open slowly, and someone walking down the stairs slowly. I could hear their hand rubbing on the wall to keep balance. I locked myself in my room and I could hear the person start walking slowly in my kitchen. I texted my father and asked if he was the one who came into my house, since he was the only one with my key, knowing that I locked the door, and he said no. I asked him to come to my house right then. In only a few moments, he showed up at my house, I came out of my room, and I quickly scanned every inch of my house. No one. But my dad said my door was unlocked. He left, and we both made sure that the door was locked, and I locked myself in my room. Thinking about what I'd heard, I realized that that's how I myself come into my own house, late at night, so as to not disturb the neighbors in the building. So, now I'm left to believe that this was a glitch. I believe I heard another me walk into my own house. Hey Raven, I've been listening to your Glitch in the Matrix stories for some six months now, and I truly wondered at first if something like this even exists. But, having experienced a small glitch yesterday, I think that more spiritual people can experience bigger and apparently impossible glitches. So, my story revolves around a candy. I go to school and there's a weird canteen lady who gives candies instead of the change. So, on Friday, she gave me two candies in return for my eight rupees and change. I had put them in the frontmost pocket of my school bag and didn't open the bag to take them out until Sunday morning. So, there I was in my bedroom with my mother. We were just talking and I started complaining to her about the canteen lady when I remembered about those candies. I walked up to my bag, which I usually keep on top of my books, on a table in my room. I forgot in what pocket I had kept them, and at first, I searched in the second to the front pocket. Now, a friend of mine had her birthday a few days ago, and in that pocket was another candy, which this friend had given to me. I took it out as well, and then opened the frontmost pocket. I clearly saw those two canteen candies. I clearly remember taking them out. Yes, I admit that I was a little absent-minded as I was talking to my mom, but I know that I had all three candies in my fist. I was closing the zipper when I suddenly felt a slight emptiness in my fist. I opened it, and there were only two candies. The birthday girl's one, and then one of the canteens. At first, I thought I had dropped the other canteen candy. I searched in every area where I thought it might be, under the table, inside the dustbin on the side, under and behind the adjacent cupboard, between the piles of books, and I even double-checked those two back pockets. I found it nowhere. My mom suggested that I should ask the maid to find it when she would be cleaning the floor. I did ask her, but she didn't find it either. That candy just disappeared, right from inside my fist. So, I wonder, has it gone back to the weird canteen lady? This isn't a glitch that happened directly to me, but it makes me grateful that I'm in the universe with a happy ending. My dad just told me something that happened to my grandma. My grandma has Parkinson's disease, which causes her to walk very wobbly. Given how her bones have become weaker from the disease, if she were to significantly fall down, things would not be good. 
About a year ago, my grandma was walking down the stairs to her basement, and when she was three steps from the bottom, she fell down the stairs. But, in the blink of an eye, she was just sitting on the floor normally. Completely fine. Not in any pain, no blood, just completely fine. I wonder, what if she did fall? pass away in a different timeline, but was transferred to the universe that I'm in. She says that it was her guardian angel looking out for her, but I think it may have been quantum immortality. Until it's her destined time to go. This adds to my theory that every human lives a beautiful life until they're in their 90s or 100s, when it's time to peacefully pass on. So, that, my friends, was this week's glitch in the Matrix Collection. On this gorgeous Monday for you, evening for me, morning, because I'm recording this on Monday morning. It is rainy. It is 67 degrees outside Fahrenheit for those who don't live in the U.S. It's not 67 Celsius, because that would be miserable. Anyways, 67 degrees Fahrenheit. It is windy. It's a bit chilly, it's cloudy, it's gray, and I love this weather. This feels like the start of the cooldown for fall, and I could not welcome it with open arms more than I am right now. Holy crap, I am not a summer person. I love the cold so much, so there. Anyways, none of that's relevant to this video. Hopefully you all enjoyed this Glitch in the Matrix collection. Some weird ones, strangely enough, two of them were in a bar. How does that happen? It happens sometimes where the stories in my glitch collections end up connected to each other by small details like that. Things that just don't make any sense. Just connect them. Not all of them, just some of them. In this case, two of them involved a bar. So, do with that what you will. It's never intentional. I've explained this before. Whenever I put these collections together, the stories that I choose are semi-random from the stories that I have. I don't have a lot of stories right now, because for some reason glitch stories are in a bit of a lull, but these are the stories I have, and like I said, it's, it's semi-random, so just it's crazy that I got two very close to each other from two very different people about a bar, so fun stuff. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this collection of stories. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button, as it does help tremendously, and... I need all the help I can get. And uh, if you liked what you heard and are new to the channel, consider subscribing, as that does mean a lot to me, personally. Like, on a personal level, that means more than I can even explain. Excuse me. Um, you can also do things like joining Patreon, memberships, uh, where you get early access to content like this and other content, depending on how you sign up or what you sign up for. There's also the Super Thanks, which is just a donation to the channel. Helps, again, tremendously but is never ever expected, but always appreciated. The other thing you can do is participate in what we call the Word of the Week. The Word of the Week is when I give you a word at the end of the video, the glitch video specifically, and then you are challenged at creating a sentence with that word in the comments. Doesn't have to be related to the content, doesn't have to be related to me just has to use the word that I give you. On the screen now, and probably several moments before now, is a collection of everybody who sent me a sentence with the word of the week in the comments section last week. Every single one of these people went above and beyond to leave me the sentence. Again, never expected, but always appreciated. As always, there is no obligation or expectation that anybody will participate in this, but if you do, just a little bit of an extra thanks, that's all. Now, this week the word of the week might be a little harder to use, just because it's a very specific word. I know that's a weird way to put that, but it's a very um, niche word, and it doesn't have many meanings. So, this one might actually be a challenge for some of you. And this week, the word of the week is diabolical. 
I would like to remind you that all these words are coming from you guys. You guys sent me a massive list of words, and we're using them, so diabolical. Uh, having the quantities of a devil, or specifically, evil, fiendish, or wicked. I also added some related words, as it may help you use the word. Um, related words would be cruel, fiendish, heinous, vicious, vile, wicked, etc. So, one could say, as I stood in the dark room, listening to the spirits around me, I was stopped dead in my tracks as I heard the sound of diabolical laughter. That would be evil laughter, I guess, or wicked laughter. So That's my example. You cannot use it. Anyways, friends, I hope you all have a gorgeous rest of your day. I hope I see you again here very soon. And please remember that you are loved, you are valid, you are important, you're the best you that you can be. Do not forget it. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And until I see you again, my friends, much love and sleep well.